In this big tractor power video, we're going to take a look at the big tractors, plows, and harvesters used during the golden age of farming in the later part of the 20th century. We will head out to the field to follow the growing season the way it used to be so that you can see and hear the farming practices from tillage to crop planting methods and, of course, the way harvesting was done during the 1960s, 70s, and 80s. During this time period, moldboard plowing was typically used to start out the growing season. Before the seeds could be planted in the field, plowing was done to break up the soil to allow air and moisture into the ground and prepare a light and fluffy seedbed by burying residue and weeds that may be left on the surface from the previous year's harvest. After the plowing pass was completed, the surface of the field was left very rough because the plow blades would leave large chunks of soil in furrows. Several cultivating passes would be needed in order to smooth out the field to make a proper seed bed. The first part of the harrowing process typically began with a disc. This implement is fitted with circular blades that would chop through the chunks of soil and begin smoothing out the field for a solid seed bed. During the tillage process, many farmers will add fertilizer to the field. A tractor will pull a fertilizer spreader across the field, broadcasting nutrients that are required by the soil to help the plants grow and thrive to produce a healthy yield when the crop is harvested. After the disking was completed, a field cultivator was often used to further smooth and level the field. A field cultivator uses coiled shanks with pointed tips that vibrate through the soil, further breaking up clods of dirt, tearing out weeds, and incorporating fertilizer so that the seeds have a nice, loose soil surface to grow in. A soil finisher makes a final smoothing pass across the field with a combination of disc blades and field cultivator shanks. Teamed up with a packer or roller, the packer running behind the soil finisher will further break down any remaining clouds of earth and also firm up the seed bed, sealing in moisture for the new seeds that will be going into the ground shortly. During this time period, some of the first double folding implements came onto the market, including models like this 45 foot soil finisher that were too wide to move down the road. So they would fold up over and over to make a narrow transport. Once all the tillage and finishing passes are completed, it's time to put the crop in the ground. Corn planters shown here place seeds in the ground in narrow rows. They can plant corn, soybeans, and other row crops. You can see this first tractor has a marker arm down on its planter to plow a line in the ground for the second tractor to follow so that the corn is planted in picket fence rows evenly across the field. This planter is also equipped with fertilizer tanks across it that help place nutrients into the ground to help the new seeds grow up quickly.
As the tractors pass by, we can see the seed boxes mounted across the back of the planter. Each of these corn planters are planting 12 rows of 30-inch space corn that runs a width of 30 feet per pass. No-till farming became popular in the golden age of farming from the 1960s into the 1980s. No-till farming is simply eliminating all the tillage passes that we've seen thus far in the video and heading straight to the field with a planter. This process is especially popular for double cropping where one crop follows another as we see here where soybeans are planted into wheat stubble. Harry Young, a western Kentucky farmer, planted the first successful field of no-till corn in the United States in the spring of 1962 near Herndon, Kentucky. Mr. Young first learned about no-till methods on a field trip to Dixon Springs, Illinois the previous year. He decided that no-till would help reduce machinery and labor costs on his farm while reducing tillage passes across the field and improving soil erosion practices. Small grains such as winter wheat, oats, barley, and even soybeans can be planted with another style planter known as a grain drill. The grain drill places the seeds in the ground at a mere 7 inches apart where the small seeds can start off with a healthy canopy like a carpet rolled out across the field. A grain drill uses large boxes that are filled with seeds and then the seeds drop down through tubes where openers slice through the soil, dropping the seeds in one after another, and then packing wheels behind the drill firm up the soil, giving the plants a healthy seed bed to start growing in. Once the seeds are in the ground, the farmer uses a sprayer to apply herbicides to the surface of the field to prevent grasses and broadleaf weeds from growing up and shading out the newly planted crop. Once the crop is up and growing, a second sprayer pass is made to either apply insecticide to drive harmful bugs away from the crop or to apply fungicide to stop diseases that may reduce the size of the plant and hurt its growth and reduce the crop's overall production. Weeds are a constant battle throughout the growing season and during the golden age of farming one of the most effective methods in fighting weeds and grasses was the row crop cultivator. The row crop cultivator is pulled by a tractor through the rows of corn or soybeans to dig up the weeds and grasses and loosen the soil. This helps stop the weeds from competing for water and fertilizer and also loosens the soil to allow the roots to grow deeper on the plants to provide a healthy yield during the fall harvest. One of the first crops to be harvested during the growing season is winter wheat. Wheat matures in the early to mid-summer, depending on the region that it is raised in, and it's harvested by a combine. The combine does two things. It cuts the grain and then separates the seeds and the grain material from the rest of the plant matter. The grain is deposited inside a bin behind the combine's cab, and the rest of the material is deposited back out in the field. Here we can see the combine harvesting wheat and leaving windrows of straw behind that will become animal bedding on a farm. A square baler collects the windrows of straw and forms them into tight uniform blocks that can be easily handled and moved from the field back to the farm where they'll be stored in a barn until they're used for animal bedding.
An automatic bale wagon collects the square bales left by the baler in the field. It picks up over 160 bales at a time and then carries them in one large block back to the farm to be stored inside the barn. Forge harvester is used to harvest feed for cows, including alfalfa and corn. Here we can see a forge harvester chopping corn, taking 14 foot tall plants and chopping them up into small pieces like a wood chipper. The harvested crop is called silage and it is processed in the forge harvester and then blown back into a forge wagon. When the wagon is full, it's unhooked from the forge harvester and then pulled by a tractor back to the farm where the silage will be unloaded into storage to be fed out to the cows at a later time. Silage is unloaded from the wagon into a silo where it ferments to become a feed for cows. Soybeans are one of the first crops harvested in the fall. This combine is equipped with a grain table that uses whirling bats to pull the soybeans into the header and then sickles cut the stems off the plant, pulling all the material into the combine where the soybeans are separated out and deposited in the grain bin and then the rest of the stems and chaff are deposited back out in the field. During the later half of the 20th century, as farm equipment became larger, it could cover more acres in a day, and that meant that farmers did not stop at sundown. Lights across the machines would light up the night and allow the harvest to continue on after dark. As farm machines grew larger in the later half of the 20th century, that meant that farmers could take on more acres. And with more acres planted, more harvesting machines were required. Oftentimes, farmers would run one, two, or more combines to bring the crop in in a timely manner to stay ahead of the weather. Combines are also used to harvest corn. This combine is equipped with a corn head that uses its snouts to push through the rows of corn and then gathering chains between the snouts snap off the ears of corn and collect them inside the combine where they are threshed. The grain from the corn is deposited in the combine's grain tank and the cobs and leaves left over are deposited back out in the field. When the combine's grain bin is full, it uses an unloading auger to transfer the corn from the combine to a waiting truck where the corn will be hauled back to the farm for storage.
As combines grew in size and harvesting capability during the golden age of farming, 18-wheel semi-trucks became a popular choice for moving grain in a fast and efficient manner from the field to the farm so that the combines could keep rolling from sunup to sundown and beyond. A tractor-powered auger conveys the grain from the truck to the grain bin. The grain bin stores the grain until it is ready to be sold and processed into food such as bread, cereal, or animal feeds. Harvest yields improved during the golden age of farming with advancements in harvesting like the side hill combine where its corn head and wheels followed the sloping terrain of the hill while the operator and threshing mechanism remained level, putting more grain in the combine's grain bin. Culture chisel plows became an important part of fall tillage after the harvest during the golden age of farming. A culture chisel plow uses disc blades to cut and size the crop residue and then chisel points to break up the soil to prepare the seedbed for next season's crop. The culture chisel plow became an important part of conservation farming and an alternative to the moldboard plow which completely buried the crop residue. The culture chisel plow sized the residue and plowed the field while leaving a majority of that residue on the surface of the field to fight erosion and to build organic matter in the topsoil to improve crop health and yields. I hope that you've enjoyed this big tractor power video featuring the golden age of farming from the later half of the 20th century. It's always exciting to get out in the field with these big classic tractors to see the tillage implements that were used, the corn planters and other planting methods that were available at the time, and of course the variety of harvesters that were used during that time period of the 1960s, 70s, and 80s. It's not every day that we get to see and hear these machines anymore, and Big Tractor Power is all about preserving farm equipment history. If you'd like to see more farm equipment in action, consider subscribing to Big Tractor Power YouTube to see over 1,000 videos of farm equipment at work. As always, thank you for watching.